Welcome to Make It Happen Monday, my weekly dose of healthy inspiration. Today I have a really, really important, very provocative, frankly for me, kind of uh, mind-blowing message to share with you. It's going to be maybe a bit longer, but trust me, you're going to want to listen to everything I'm going to tell you because what I'm going to share are the current uh, most powerful evidence base, scientifically validated ways in which you can slow aging. There's so much myth, there's so much spin out there. And the good news is we now have incredible new science related to this. And the reason it's important is people need to recognize that aging is by far the single greatest risk factor for the development of chronic disease. Nothing else really touches it. Let me give you a feel for this. Um, and, and when I say chronic disease, if you look at cancer, if you look at cardiovascular disease, look at type 2 diabetes, look at dementia, by far it's aging that really, really trumps up your risk of getting it. Again, let me give you a couple examples to make the point. If you are a 24 year old woman living in America, your chances of developing breast cancer in the next decade are one in 2000. If you're a, set, a woman that lives to age 70 in America, your chances of developing breast cancer are one in 24. That's a hundred fold increase simply because you went from age 24 to 70, meaning you aged. What about um, uh, some other cancers and other cancer stats? So you may know, I'm sure you know that smoking increases the risk of cancer. It actually increases the risk of cancer fivefold. When you hit the age of 50, living to the age of 50 increases your chances of cancer a hundredfold. Living to the age of 70 increases your chances of cancer a thousandfold. So aging, the reason why it's important to identify the strategies that can slow aging is because ultimately that's how we're going to be live a long life free of disease. That's like fighting disease, preventing disease. There's nothing more powerful. So um, there are esteemed researchers all over the world working on this. I recently had the honor and pleasure of hearing Walter Longo. He is a rock star anti-aging researcher in UCLA and he has written this book, The Longevity Diet. I picked it up and I didn't, I didn't stop reading until I'd finished it. And then David Sinclair, who's at Harvard, again, they're, they're rock stars, they're world renowned, and there are other scientists working on really digging into what makes us age and what, do we, what can we do to control it. And the great news is they have identified things we can do to control these longevity pathways and to, and to arrest and to turn off what we call the, the aging pathways. Okay, so I'm going to share with you five strategies, five evidence-based strategies. And again, if you want to learn more about this, I encourage you, you could read these books. You can Google both of these people. They're in podcasts all over the place. Lots of interviews available free on the web where you can hear them talking about their studies and the science, and the latest information out there. Okay, so the top thing you can do, the top influence you have over the rate at which you age is through nutrition. And of all the things you can do through nutrition, and I'm going to share four separate things, the top thing is to eat less. Another way of saying this, nothing will age you faster than overeating. I'm going to say that again. Nothing will age you faster than overeating. And they know exactly how it happens, and they know exactly how eating less slows aging. So let's talk about that. You say, well, what are the different ways you can eat less? This is why intermittent fasting, this is why time-restricted eating is so hot. So anything you can do in your life to help, help you eat less. You know, can you restrict your food intake to a four to 10 hour window every day? Can you do intermittent fasting, which is maybe twice a week, you have one meal that's uh, five to 700 calories? Or can you just occasionally skip a meal? Or can you just get in the habit of not eating to the point that you're stuffed? Anything you can do to eat less is going to help slow your aging. Now, so what's happening? So when you eat less, 
you're activating what we call the survival circuits. The longevity genes are called sirtuins. And when they're activated, just there's just a massive benefit downstream, decreased oxidation, decreased inflammation, genomic stability, mitochondria get regenerated, renewed, um, you get uh, autophagy, meaning old cells that are all screwed up and not working well, self-destruct. Uh, you get stem cell activation. You suddenly have brand new cells that form, right? So that's the first thing, eat less. The second thing is eat less animal-based proteins. Why? Well, Animal-based proteins have all the essential amino acids, and unfortunately, those essential amino acids are the ones that activate the pro-aging pathway known as mTOR, mTOR, right? So you wanna cut back on the animal-based proteins and shift more to the plants. One thing great about plant-based proteins, and you'll learn this if you listen to the podcast or if you read the books, is that plant-based proteins, the amino acids in them are neutral. They will not activate the pro-aging pathways, okay? All right? The third thing you can do is decrease your intake of sugar and refined carbs because glucose, particularly glucose going up very high, um, is a known accelerator of the aging pathway known as AMPK. AM, AMPK, AMPK, okay? It's a pro-aging pathway. And both the animal-based amino acids and sugar will also kind of shut off the sirtuins. Sirtuins are your longevity circuits, your longevity genes, okay? Let's see, the third thing would be to eat more plant-based foods, plant-based foods, because they house phytochemicals. Phytochemicals develop in plants because they allow plants to stay alive and thrive. Plants produce them as a result of environmental stress. What we now know is when we take in these plants, particularly stress plants, which is meaning organic, organic plants are more stress than conventionally grown plants, okay? There's still plenty of phytochemicals in conventional, don't get me wrong, but organic is gonna have higher levels. And these phytochemicals are in a sense in a sense, your body interprets them as stress. It's almost like the plant and the environment um, cueing us that stress is out there. So they're, they kind of stress us a little bit. We call that xenohormesis. And that activates these longevity circuits, the sirtuins that do all this incredible good stuff, autophagy, stem cell activation, decrease inflammation, decrease ox oxidation. Okay, all right, so eat less, eat less animal-based proteins, eat more plant-based, plant, plant -based, eat less sugar, eat more plant-based foods for the phytochemical, particularly stress plants, organic plants, and the last thing that has been shown to directly impact these uh, aging networks is exercise, and it's a powerful anti-aging strategy, uh, and most people know this, but they don't realize that when you look at the extraordinary disease protection benefits of, of exercise, which are just mind-blowing, almost every disease you could name to me, we have studies showing that if people exercise, it makes them less likely to get that. Well, the, the main reason that's happening is because exercise activates your longevity circuits. It stimulates those sirtuins. Any movement is helpful, more is even better, and the very best thing to do to activate those sirtuins is do some HIIT training, high intensity interval work, where, and you don't have to go very long, but just short periods of time, can you really pick that heart rate up? Like really go. And so what I do is I try to do some HIIT twice a week. I get on the spinning bike, it's super easy. I do five intervals. I go all out as hard as I can, one minute, I'm kind of dying at the end. And then I take a one minute complete rest or just like, really super, super easy. And then I repeat that and I do five cycles. The studies are showing you need a minute and you need a minute uh, in between, don't go too much longer. I mean, that's the ideal hit is five, five or more cycles, like I just said. And again, make sure that doing hit training is safe for you. Ask your doctor, you know, if you're not sure, but getting that heart rate up, it, it, yeah, just a little bit, little bit, few minutes, a couple days a week, a few minutes, a little bit every day, whatever it can do is fantastic, but all forms of exercise will work. 
So anyway, thank you for taking the time to watch this. It's a really, really important message. It's so provocative, it's compelling, it's kind of got my brain kind of spinning. And again, I encourage you to, you know, you know, go to the experts and learn about this yourself because it really is kind of mind-blowing stuff and I really think it can make a huge difference in people's life and quality of life and their health span. This is not about living a long time and like for the last 30 years of your life being miserable with chronic disease. I'm talking about true health span, living a super long time, totally vital, totally well, and dying fast. We call that the compression of morbidity, and we know from the blue zones that that can happen. You can live a super long life, be healthy all the way through, and die fast. And engaging in the strategies that I just covered with you is a great way to increase the chances of that. Thank you. Over the next three video lessons that comprise this short course, I will be sharing information that promises to wow you and inspire you. It still wows me even when I think about it. and the two master levers that you have at the control deck that we now know largely dictate your health are diet and lifestyle. And you're gonna see those are the two master levers that you're gonna to use to nurture your microbiome. So let's go ahead and get started.